very very warm welcome to the India's numero uno fashion designer uh, Manish Manhotra. Uh, you know, had we been there on a live stage, Manish, we would have probably been hearing applause. So you would have to imagine that uh, <laughs> coming happening right now. Thank you. Uh, so much. Manish is, you know, the ultimate ultimate cinematic storyteller, and I think it's his clothes which have made the Indian movie so unforgettable. And I think uh, that he's really helped to take Indian fashion and turned it into a love style, lifestyle and which is renowned across the world by one and all. I think no Indian wedding is complete without Manish Kachor being coming there in some way or the other, some form of the other, which we always continue to see. And also, uh, you know, he's amongst one of the few fashion designers in India uh, who've crossed the 100 crore club of couture fashion and now going in much more higher places with all the stuff that he's doing, which we are going to talk about with him today. Um, so let me start with this, Manish, that you've made fashion a lifestyle in India. And, you know, but I think lifestyle is really all about culture. So what is it that you understand about Indian culture, Bollywood culture, which is helping you build this fashion uh, as a lifestyle, uh, as a mission? For me, I think that India has got such a wide, really vast uh, spectrum of uh, cultural uh, variations, which become one entire Indian culture. Like whether you see the Maharajas, you see our artisans, you see our fabrics, our colors, our traditions, our um, you know different states having so many different uh, foods and uh, beliefs, and uh, um, in terms of clothes, different uh, forms of fabrics. So there's a lot that India offers, right? And um, for me, I've been influenced by it, I think, from the age of five. And I've been a huge fan of cinema from the age of five. And my mother tells me that when uh, there's, there was a tuition teacher, I don't know why she kept a tuition teacher for me at the age of five. But um, I used to tell that teacher that your shoes and clothes are not matching. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, and I used to be wanting to see every Hindi film that released. And I was, my mother says I was so uh, attracted to color. And I would, she says at times she would hide from me when she was leaving home because I would definitely comment on what she was wearing. <laughs> that, I'm sure the teacher wanted to hear just that. <laughs> so I think the influence of, um, that sometimes you're just born with a certain passion. And um, I'm very lucky and grateful and thankful to my parents who somewhere didn't come in the way of that and they encouraged it. Yes. Even if it meant going to see that many movies. And I think in that cinema, sitting in cinemas and watching all the movies wide-eyed, I was so influenced by the color that I saw, the clothes that I saw, the music that I heard. Um, and it, it inspired me so much. I went into painting classes. And uh, and I you know, kept getting in, uh, you know, more and more inspired. And when I travel, I'm inspired by nature, by temples, by architecture, so much. There's so much that India has to offer. I totally agree with you. You know, um, I read that you started your journey in Bollywood as a model uh, in the industry, in the entertainment industry as a model, and yet you transformed very quickly to becoming a fashion designer. So how did that transformation happen for you? What What was it that you noticed in the industry which made you do this change? I was always interested in movies. I always watched so many films. And like I mentioned earlier, my parents encouraged it as well, which is so kind of them because that went on to becoming my life. And I was really passionate about films. So I wanted to be actually a film director. When the modeling happened, I got busy with modeling. And that, there was always this one thing about me that whatever I did, I did it very sincerely. So my three years of my college, I was going for look test. I was modeling. I was never one of those students who, you know, was who's wasting a lot of time or who's standing with friends at the corner of his building. I would be going for some audition or the other. So while I was modeling, I started working in a store as well as a sales boy. And I used to sketch there continuously. I used to keep changing the mannequin. So my fascination was clothes as well. And I thought that, I thought since I had not studied fashion, and I was just passionate about it, and I loved films. And I, I remember the late 80s, the look in the, in the movies was not so good. I mean, you had directors, I guess, Chopra, Shikhar Kapoor, and all of them. But... The looks that you saw in the 40s and 50s and 60s and of course the 70s, I think somebody got lost in the 80s. And uh, I I put two of my dreams together, which is movies and clothes. And that's how I decided to get into costumes. And then, you know, I, I kept meeting photographers and, and various magazine journalists who were looking for designers to style their photo shoots. And 
And I think then I started giving it 48 hours in a 24 hour day. I mean, I would work that much. I really, really worked. And I was so keen that I should change the way the movies look. So I came up with this concept of a look where what's your hair, what's your makeup, what's your jewelry, what's your costume? Because I felt, I felt that's very important in a costume. And in those days, when there's an Indian outfit, the heroine would have long hair. And the next scene, she's wearing a Western outfit and her hair would be short. And I was like, how can haircut keep changing like this? You know. So I came up with that whole concept of a consistent look. But it was all done because I was so very passionate about the movies. Sure. And you know, so I mean, uh, today when you've achieved so much success and you've done so much work in uh, for Indian fashion and you've sort of brought a great modern version of Indian fashion, which is so fascinating. What is it that you realize about Indian consumers sensibilities? You know, what, what have you understood about it? Um, how do you think the Indian woman wants to see herself uh, inspired by Bollywood, but she, yet she doesn't want to be a replica of a uh, actress or somebody. So how, how do you sort of balance these both things together? Well, I think that there was a time when the people really looked at actors and what they were wearing. And if you remember, those styles became iconic and those styles became what people would be seen wearing. But over the, the over time, there was so much of cinema also changed, right? The glamour cotton went out and the realism came into movies. And I also feel that people had even more um, influences coming from different verticals and different uh, spectrums, like say social media, like say your YouTube, like say your internet. And, and so their influences grew, their knowledge grew. And I think at the time, if we speak about today, I think women and men want to be the person that they are, you know, whether it's endogenous, whether it's the whole fashion has become very demographic now. It's not become any more of just one stereotype. Okay. And I think people want to, um, you know, wear fashion the way they want to, as if they, they know they know themselves a lot more. They are far more confident. Of course, they admire the actors, they admire the fashion shows, they admire the designers, they admire clothes. They, but they also somewhere, I think, today have their own mind. Right. So change is inevitable. Change is something that is a part of any form of design. Change has to be a part of all of us. And I think it's changing and it consistently changes. And so the consumer changes. And today's consumer is far more confident, far more knowledgeable and wants to pick up things that they like and they see uh, for them. Design is uh, very important. Quality is very important. And innovation is very important. And I think they want to take all of that and wear it their way, you know. Right. And even sometimes they want to replica what they're seeing completely in terms of hair and makeup because they're liking what they're seeing. So I think it depends on all they like. If you manage to show them something that they really like, then they are for it. And then once they take it, they also want to wear it their own way. That's right. And lately, you've also started a beauty line, you know, with your uh, range of hot couture makeup. Um, and so, I mean, you know, for me, this is really more brand licensing as a business model. And do you see the design industry now becoming more inclined toward licensing and actually going into far more extensions uh, only rather than couture fashion? Or uh... Well, I think that is the future completely. And if you see all the international designers who've been designers from much before us, the design fraternity there and the design entire families there are many, many years old. I think that is the future, right? Because, I mean, you can't just have clothes. You need to, if you need to expand in our case, it's jewelry, it's makeup, you're coming up, now starting with home. And mind you, these are all things that I'm very passionate about because I actually feel that I started with makeup very late because considering that in the early 90s, I was the first designer to introduce styling and start this whole thing of a look and where makeup was also important and jewelry was important. I actually started these verticals way back. But anyway, it's now there. And um, and I think that for a designer, it's very important to business sphere. Those creative thoughts, those are coming from their heart. You know? Sure. And uh, because I think anything that's creative has to come from your heart. And then that has to be followed by business, which is the mind. First Correct. heart, then mind. For me, it's always like that. Sure. And I, I do feel that getting dressed is an integral part of fashion, right? I mean, clothes is one thing, but you really 
Well, it's how you see it. It's either you, you, you term it as getting dressed or you term it as feeling good. You know, I know so many people in the lockdown where they've also like kind of said, okay, I'm getting dressed tonight and I'm probably having dinner with just my husband, you know, like girls send me pictures <laughs> really dressed. So I think even sometimes, you know, it's getting dressed is also, uh, it's like a, it's like a bar, it's like having a shower, right? Where you, you feel good and you look at things a little more brighter way in a more positive way. And that is that dream or that thought of yeah. you feeling good by feeling that you're looking good is what I uh, I am there for. Because that I feel, there's so many times I feel being a part of these wonderful movies or weddings where, you know, why are your clothes and being a part of that happiness and that celebration is so satisfying, you know. And right. uh, yeah. Sure. So you just mentioned that, you know, uh, the designers in the West have been experimenting with different lines for so long. So which designer in the West has really inspired you? Um, and, you know, what particularly now do you think, you know, there is a whole uh, load of change that is happening in the fashion industry today, particularly with remote working, work from home culture. So how is it? What is it that you're drawing from the West? And do you think um, it's going to be uh, interesting to see in the Indian fashion industry in the coming years? Well, I think that for anything to last, the way the fashion houses internationally have lasted, heart is most important, you know. And then came in the mind of the business. So whether you see Coco Chanel, whether you see even a, in a brand which doesn't really have a face like Louis Vuitton, but look at the amazing uh, innovation that they come out with. One of my most favorite brands. And, and even a, a, a brand like Chanel, it's years of work years and years of work. So look at the, even Ferragamo, it's a family-oriented business. Look at the amount of soul, the, you know, the amount of heart uh, it all has. And then it became into businesses. And I think for any business to last for, you know, last for decade after decade requires a lot of input, requires a lot of thought, requires a lot of work and I admire that consistency. Look, it's very easy to make a like a flash in the pan kind of thing, like a flash in the pan, like where you, uh, you know, come and make a collection and now you're on social media and you're, you, you some film stars wear clothes and it's all appreciated. But time and lasting out for decades, it's only talent, hard work, persistence, and I think vision and uh, the business uh, accumulation, business accumulation, sorry, if that's the right word, yeah. The business uh, focus and uh, path, you know, being very clear of your path is something that is very, very important. And I feel those brands have really shown that to us, that if all that is in place, brands could last for even a century or beyond. Absolutely. Um, you know, there's somebody out here, uh, Pradeep, he's asked a question from you. And he's asking, uh, what is your view on sustainability within the Indian fashion and textile industry? Uh, well, I think that sustainability think, is something. Uh, sorry. Uh, you think? And how, how can we reduce the loss in the sector, particularly, you know, there's a lot of waste also that comes out of it. So how can we sort of address that? Well, I think the first fundamental uh, essence that we all have to understand, especially designers and, uh, and people, that we don't have to produce that much you know mm. i think right now post lockdown as well people are not wanting that much quality has to definitely surpass quantity so we've got to keep that a bit controlled and and hence it also starts when you have different verticals of business it doesn't only have to be about clothes right and i think that also when a basic responsibility of every citizen and, and likewise of every designer. When that is in place, sustainability also is taken a bit of care. You know, you take you take care of that as well. Now, recycled garments, um, looking at lesser wastage, uh, putting your um, uh, lots of interesting works that you must have in, had in your path and are not being used, putting that in together together in a new a creation, all of these small, uh, you know, points that if you tick mark and you actually do them, you collectively are working towards sustainability. 
Yeah. And I think that um, and I think that being conscious, cautious, and being responsible are two very big fundamental points for us for us in the journey in terms of sustainability. And I think technology, responsibility, being sustainable today are key essentials for any brand or any designer for them to last out. Sure. But I mean, you know, having said that, uh, luxury couture is all about experience. It's about touch and feel. And yet, you know, the kind of times that we are living in, it looks like we need to go digital. We need to think omni-channel. And you know, you have got one of the most, uh, some of the most popular stores as a designer. So how are you going to think of that changeover, the digital changeover that is today required in luxury fashion? Well, that is the requirement today. I, I cannot run away from that. That is the requirement today. And also uh, for people to feel safer, digital, um, uh, you know, and I tell you something, in the last three months, I've never had that many digital meetings in the past that I've had now. Because this is the new norm. This is the new normal. And um, and I think for us, it is really, really important to also come out with products which are probably a little more digital friendly and uh, are probably a lot, lot more accessible and, you know, I don't think people are in a mood to go extra opulent right now. I don't think they want to go larger than life. And I think they're all in a mood of going glamorous. Yes, of course, they want to go glamorous. Some want to go more ethnic. Some want to go more earthy. But I think people are in a mood of wearing something that is more wearable hmm. and more lasting probably. And I think that is another conscious effort being made by us, you know, back home and um, for the next collection, especially. And that is consistently in my mind that it has to be a very digitally friendly collection as well. And um, and I think that is the way it is for a couple of months from now. And uh, we as a, as a fashion house and as a business are adapting the new normal. Right. And I think that challenging, but in a way, exciting. Mm. It's almost like a new brief. And because I work with that many films, nearly thousand films, and every director gave me, diff like director was different, right? And they gave me a character brief, and I took it from there and said, okay, let's make this out of this character. So I think the, what nature is telling us today, or what life is telling us today, is a brief from the universe. And there's no other way but to accept it and um, do something new and recreation and re recreate something and reinvent yourself. So do you also feel that there's some, um, Mr. Singh has asked a question here and he says that uh, the Indian couture is very much becoming occasion oriented. You know, people dress up in high fashion uh, when it's weddings or some other occasions, but they tend to prefer Western wear when it's uh, on other occasions. So how, how do you feel as a designer, your uh, uh, point of view of designing is changing because of that? But you know what, I, I actually completely feel that I, I think a red carpet in India but it should see a lot more Indian clothes. It should see a lot of interesting, maybe a Banarsi woven sari. It should see a beautiful vintage brocade sari. Uh, it should see a lot more Indian garments. I think somewhere being very inspired by the West, we definitely do a lot more Western clothes on the red carpet. And that's one thing that I consistently saying, hey, why don't you wear a sari? Like, I love saris, you know. And... Um, and I think that um, in India, couture is a lot of bridal wear because that is the time when families come together to celebrate and are definitely wanting to dress up and get into handmade couture, right? But where the celebrity on the red carpet is concerned, I actually agree with Mr. Singh, and I feel that uh, we definitely should see a lot more Indian clothes on the red carpet. I'm, I'm for one. I, I am for that person. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. I think the red, the red carpet experience, the weddings, nothing is going to change when it comes to Indian. Totally agree with you. You know, um, I must also say that with the kind of wonderful work that you've done for this industry, and I personally feel that uh, what you've done for Bollywood has probably inspired everybody outside India to, uh, uh, you know, think of... Uh, uh, weddings or think of special occasions in their families um, as a uh, as a as a great lifestyle event, and they want to dress up and they want to feel good about it. 
you know so for what you've done in terms of creativity for this country is truly outstanding and you know that is also one of the reasons why we would um, you know we would be seeing you as our cover face of entrepreneur in uh, the month of august 2020 so i would like for you to sort Thank of so, uh, so i'll just put the picture on over here which is the cover shoot we've done with <laughs> and uh, you know the fact that today uh, he's making and he's put the wave and you know we're so we're talking about local um, uh, vocal for local and i think you truly truly gone out and done it so he's the cover face of uh, uh, our magazine the entrepreneur magazine in august 2020 and he's truly going to reimagine the business of high fashion as we go forward. So thank you, Manish. And while, of course, we do not hear any other cheers, so I'll cheer for you and say that, you know, thank you for uh, donating our thank thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Also, we would like to present uh, Manish with uh, our, one of our first award categories of the day, which is the Creative Entrepreneur of the Year Award. Um, Manish has... Uh, probably done more for Indian fashion than anybody else in terms of uh, bringing really the Bollywood dream. And he is what I would like to call the India's 21st century fashion godfather. So thank you, Manish, uh, for you, Manish. Uh, you know, you. making our country proud with and making our fashion sensibilities so, so much better they would have been otherwise. So he's also thank the you. creative entrepreneur of the year for Entrepreneur Awards 2020. Thank you so much. Um, so, you know, I mean, I would love for you to tell us this as we present you this award. What all streams are we likely to see you in? You're already there in couture. You're already there in makeup now. What what kind of extensions, what kind of areas are you likely to go and extend yourself so, into? In this morning we were having a meeting and I think that where our makeup line is concerned, our jewelry line is concerned, and now we are starting with comb. I think we... we we need to go a lot more deeper in this verticals and have a lot more for the next one year. We definitely see home as our new introduction and uh, and also where jewelry is concerned and where makeup is concerned, we will definitely see a lot more variety, a lot more uh, wide range uh, compared to what there is now. And um, I think in my clothes, we we not a new label, but we're going to come up with a completely new thought process, which is younger, which is more adaptable, wearable, um, even price point friendlier. And um, the ethos will be Indian, and it's like an Indo-Western uh, bridge line collection. So it's not quite, it's not going to be diffusion. It's it's like a, it's like a more, um, you know, it's not couture, it's like a it's diffusion, so it's more like a bridge uh, collection, which is also going to have separates. So you can pick up things and give your personality that change. It could be a short embroidered, beautifully embroidered jacket, which probably you can wear with your mother's beautiful uh, <laughs> so There yeah. will be lots of separates, uh, separates that you can uh, pick up from that. So that that is that we will launch somewhere in January 2021, but or or by February 2021. But right now, home is something that we're looking to launch at least the first drop uh, by Diwali. And uh, I'm going a lot more deeper and a lot more intense with makeup and jewelry. Sure. And we're absolutely looking forward to it. And trust me, after the lockdown, there we, there, there's going to be an absolute barrage of people who would be wanting to buy your products. Well, I hope so. And thank you so much. Yeah, we're now going to present the other awards. And therefore, I'm going to request Kavya to please join us here and uh, announce the awards of, for, uh, for other entrepreneurs as well. Okay, as Kavya joins us, uh, Manish, uh, I think somebody is also asking, what is your formula of selling luxury and high price points? What makes consumers spend so much more than the average consumer does? Come again? Sorry. Sorry, I didn't get that. Um, so there is Rumika who's asked us, what is the formula of selling luxury at high price points? What makes your consumer spend uh, so much than the average, much more than an average consumer does? Well, first, also, it is about the occasion that they're looking at. And different kind of, uh, you know, uh, consumers. And some consumers want a more opulent or a more, more intense or a more 
uh, intricate worked uh, piece. And I think for anything in life, anything, it's not just about a garment, to have a certain price point, first thing that comes first is called, is the uh, is, uh, absolute uh, quality, you know, from the finish to the to the fabric chosen to the to an, if it's a hotel it's a garment it's a it's, it's a dish that you want to eat anything that is at a certain price definitely has to have quality in it. that's very very uh, important and what people cook I mean you know how much of heart is gone into it and I think that when people today with social media and knowledge being there on their phones um, yet go for a product that means somewhere they uh, are people who are coming again and again to their product and which means that it is satisfying the need of looking good the satisfying uh the satisfy is giving them the satisfaction of spending that money for a qualitative product and it's somewhere also satisfying them themselves that they have something that they can wear for years so uh you know for me in life something that lasts longer has a lot more value whether it's a person, whether it's a business, whether it's a product. And I think that assurance is very key for any couture designer or any product that has a that has a price point which is a bit higher. Sure. Thank you. Uh, so Kavya is here. Over to you, Kavya. Please, can you start the awards uh, distribution? I think we're enjoying the first glitches of uh, uh, this. So uh, I think Manish, we can continue with the chat a little more. Um, so there is, uh, there's another question which has come for you. I think that it's not going to uh, stop here. Uh, is Kavya online? I don't see her. So there is somebody who's from Myanmar who joined us and they're asking what are the criteria and scope for research in the garment and fashion industry and what are the price, price points to be considered while garment industry research? Looks like that is a student who's doing his doctorate. No, so what's the question? Sorry, I didn't get that. Sorry. So they said that how do you go about researching the fashion industry today? This person's joined us from Myanmar and uh, they said, you know, what kind of, on what scale of price points they should go out and then start researching uh, about fashion? Well, I think that, I think that what is, so that person wants to be a fashion designer, right? Possibly. Yeah. So I think that, what does your heart say? What do you want to do? Like, for example, I haven't studied fashion. I used to draw and sketch and I really worked on that to learn painting, to continuously sketching. But I took the Bollywood part because I loved films, right? So because I so I followed my passion and and my um, journey for de in design became unique. But at that time I didn't think so. I just followed my passion of cinema for cinema. So I think in any form of design, and if you want to be a designer or you want to get into the business of fashion or design, it's very important to follow your passion. So do you like couture? Do you like diffusion? Do you like breath? Do you like menswear? Do you like women's wear? I think those are the questions that you need to ask yourself and find that answer. And that answer will be your first step towards your path. 